We're going to do the calibration of a differential pressure switch. Our differential pressure switches are in the same families as our pressure switches. We have the L-series, the G-series, the P-series differentials, and in this example I'm showing the D-series, which is in our B family of switches. To test a differential pressure switch, you need to measure the static pressure and the operating pressure at the same time. The difference, of course, is to differential, so you'll measure the difference between the high side and the low side of the switch. To connect this, you have to add an additional manifold to our calibration setup. We connect the high side of the pressure switch to the primary manifold. This is the gauge that we will be using to set our set points with. We also have connected the low side of the pressure switch to an additional manifold, which is on the back side. That manifold is connected to the primary manifold with a hose and a locking valve. We will bring the pressure up to the static pressure, lock it off, and then we will be able to increase and decrease the pressure on the high side of the switch while maintaining the low side of the switch at the static pressure. This will allow us to set a set point at the static pressure that we need. The first step, of course, is we would connect the electrical. We would remove the cover of the switch. The white wire is the common contact. The blue wire is the normally open contact. The red wire is the normally closed contact. The switch adjustment is done from the adjustment nut down here. We always want to exercise our switch first, but we are now going to exercise the switch with the static pressure. So we will establish the static pressure on the system first. In this case, we're going to use a 20 PSI static and it's a 100 PSI D range switch. We'll start by establishing the static pressure at 20 PSI. To do that, we'll increase the entire system pressure on the primary gauge to 20 PSI, and then we will close off the valve, leaving the pressure on the low side. Now we will exercise the switch, but keeping in mind that 20 PSI is our base. So we will now exercise this 100 PSI D switch from 20 PSI to 120 PSI. Back to 20 PSI. We would do this three times to exercise the switch from 20 to 120 PSI. To set an increasing set point, we're going to set this to 80 PSI D increasing. So that will now be 80 plus 20, the static pressure. So our test gauge, we were going to be setting for a pressure of 100 on our test gauge, but that is 80 PSI D. So we bring the gauge pressure up to 100. And as you see, the switch has already turned on, but that's okay. We are going to cause the switch to turn off and then turn back on again at that set point. We're gonna use our adjustment tool. In this case, we're going to make it turn off. So we're gonna turn it clockwise. It turned off. Now we're going to turn it counterclockwise until the switch turns on, the light turns green. At this point, we're going to take the pressure back down to 20 now and then increase up to our set point and measure it to make sure we've set it correctly. It's set just a little bit over, about 101 or 81 PSID. We can take it back down to 
20 and bring it back up to 80 and make a small adjustment. Keeping in mind that it's not zero now for the bottom of the range, it's 20. So I'm going to bring it up to the 100 mark and make a slight adjustment counterclockwise until the green light turns on. Now I'm going to take it back down to 20 and bring it up and we should be closer to 100. It's virtually on 100. Now we would measure the reset point of the switch by lowering the pressure down. See where the light turns red. And that is approximately 88. So 100 minus 88 is 12. So the dead band of the switch is 12. We would repeat this measurement three times for accuracy. Now we're going to set a decreasing set point with the same switch. This is a 100 PSI D range switch. We just set it to 80 PSI D increasing. Now we're going to set it to 20 PSI D decreasing. In this case where we have the static pressure at 20 pounds, 20 PSI D decreasing will measure 40 PSI on the gauge. To start, we're going to take the switch to full range and then bring it back down to that set point and adjust the switch to operate that. Again, we have a static pressure of 20 pounds, so full range is 20 plus 100, so it will now be 120 PSI on the gauge. So I'm going to take the pressure to 120. The switch will turn on at approximately 100, as we had just set it that way. And now we're going to bring it down to 40 on the gauge, which will be our 20 PSI D decreasing set point. Now I'm going to adjust the switch to turn on at that point and then turn off at that point. I'm going to do that by turning the adjustment nut counterclockwise. It's going to take several turns because we're going to the other end of the adjustment range. The green light has turned on. Now I'm going to turn it clockwise until the red light turns on, the reset for the switch, which is our decreasing set point. The red light has just turned on, so now we need to measure the set point to see if we have accurately set it. To measure this set point, we will go back down to the 20 pounds, which is our reference here. Then we will go up to 120 pounds, and then come down to 40. To see if we turn off at 40. We're set just a little bit low, so we will repeat this process and do it again. We will take the pressure down to 20, back up to 120, adjust it to turn off at 40. Set it to 40. It's still in the on position. We need to turn it clockwise just a little bit more. The light turned red. Now we're going to go down to 20. Back up to 120.
to just before 40. Bring the pressure to just before 40. And we should be a little bit closer to turning off. Red light coming on. At 40. And we're very good. We would now repeat this measurement three times, starting from 20 to 120, and then down to the set point.